No, 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 no. Oh no, no. Oh no. Oh, to the head. Hello and welcome back to our Sturgeon Viking. And we are going to be doing a little bit of a battle in the beginning of this episode. And uh, now here's the thing. <laughs> I did not take into account how heavy this armor actually is in comparison to my athletic skill. So as you can see, I am moving very, very slowly indeed. So hopefully we're going to be able to maximize my skill gain in athletics. Uh, I mean, that's exactly the reason why I have been specking into as much athletics as I can possibly get my hands on. And um, as you can see, I'm actually using uh, I'm using that Falchion, I believe. Am I not using that Falchion? I think I am using that Falchion. Did a lot of damage just now, which is actually very nice. So pretty happy with that. And let me just tell you something. I have installed a new version of Bannerlord Tweaks, among other things, and made things just that little bit better for us in terms of quality of life improvements and everything. So that is very cool indeed and thank you to those of you in the comments that actually helped me out with that too because it makes a massive massive difference in the enjoyment factor that one gets from the game i mean the modding community especially is something that i really like to support i really like to support the community's efforts in doing all of this to expand the lifespan of this particular game and indeed any other game that has modding support it really makes a huge difference raise the meek used to give tier one two three troops extra experience but now it only gives tier one to two troops extra experience so i actually think that combat tips is going to be better in the long run even though it is just literally a plus one experience bonus so i suppose that is what we're going to do i guess we'll do combat tips and then we'll see how that goes. We're just gonna continue moving onward and hopefully getting some decent units recruited as well. Look at that, oh, that's nice. Very good indeed. Okay, so we have a good amount of cash thanks to our smithing, which by the way is actually part of the base game. Hilariously enough, people saying that modding is uh, making the game easier. You can do this in the base game as well, literally. You can make some javelins and then sell them for hundreds of thousands of gold. And that is not any mod that does that. So I don't know where, you, where you're coming from with that, but okay. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to be silly, then you can. Otherwise, I actually like this weapon quite quite a bit and uh, we just need to try and find a town that has a massive amount of gold in it. I think that's probably going to be the greatest thing we can do. Oh, Sea Raiders. I am pretty low in HP. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. Uh, someone actually also mentioned that I should probably buy some Pugios and then I should um, create a pole arm of, of some sort or a long swinging weapon. And yes, okay, yeah, that, that would definitely be a good strategy if I was actually planning on using a horse, but I'm actually not planning on that. I was planning on playing much more in the style of the Nords from Warband, where they don't really have that much cavalry or in general my own character is not really going to be utilizing cavalry that much. What I'd like to do is just play the classic Viking where we basically just run around with a two-handed something or other, whether that be a two-handed sword or not, doesn't really make any difference to me, but a two-handed on foot without any horse is probably going to be the thing that I'll end up doing, but it really depends of course, and we have now gained another level which is nice because we do actually have really good gear now with the exception of our cape so it would probably make sense for me to take a look at the value of capes let's have a look at something that's really really good that's the only thing i guess i will indeed take that it is not going to give me a huge benefit whatsoever but it's going to give me enough i suppose all right, so I'm going to make a couple more javelins. Also, bear in mind, this is part of the base game. So, you know, we can definitely do this. So we're just going to be making a whole bunch of these. I actually don't know whether I'm making anything good right now because I'm actually using a different shaft. Usually I use a tree branch and I don't know whether this really makes any difference with the exception of the difficulty level. So I'm hopeful that maybe it will either give me more money or it will just make it um, easier. Yep, oh, yep, yep. It does actually give us more money. There you go. So now we actually have the ability to acquire 105,000. Yes, that is insane. So let me actually just take a quick look here. Ooh, nice brass scale shoulders. I will indeed be taking those. Thank you. Yes, I will definitely take those. What we should do is we should go to various affluent towns and uh, we should try to trade our javelins with expensive pieces of armor. That generally tends to be the best way to go about it because then what you can do is you can sell your armor for the small amount of funds that a town 
town is going to have. And hilariously enough, the towns don't even seem to have that much money. I don't know. I don't know why that is, which is a bit weird. So hopefully this one might. This one might. Uh, no, still only 25,000. That's actually kind of weird. All right. So this might be a little bit better for us. OK, so that means I'm just going to check to see if there are any upgrades. We're just going to buy all of this. And then what we're going to do is we're literally just going to trade it, basically. We're just going to trade it and, uh, well, not all my stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I basically did that, didn't I? Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so what about, um, ah, yes, some hardwood. Thank you very much. I would like that. And what about some horses? I'd like some horses too. Okay, so I'm going to get 25,000 from this as well for one javelin. Literally all of that for one javelin. That is crazy. As I've said before, I have no smithing mods enabled whatsoever. It is literally just the base game. So the game is hard without mods. No. Anyway, we're going to be taking some more horses. Yes, more horses. The, the more horses that we can get, the better. The main problem with me creating my own swords is that they never turn out as good as what you're actually going to get. Maybe uh, the armor over here is going to be really good too. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Give me those. Thank you. But we're going to move at a snail's pace. Absolute snail's pace. So that's going to be a bit problematic. Yes, I'm, I need to pay 96,000 right now. So let me actually just continue to take stuff. So so what we'll do now is we will literally just trade two of these javelins. We're going to get 39,000 as a result in terms of profit. Smithing is very, very strong indeed. Fugios are only sold in Empire territory as far as I am aware. So I will not be able to find anything here. Oh, hello. Yes, lovely. Perfect shoulders right there. Shoulder armor. There we go. And then we'll just trade one of these. There we go. Oh, there is actually a tournament going on here, but I am at 65% HP. Is that enough? All right. So we're joining the tournament and I am extremely excited about this because I really haven't done a tournament in a long, long time. So it's going to be a lot of fun to try it out. And because we're in Batanian territory, they have an increased chance to give me a two handed. Bear in mind, my two handed weapon proficiency is terrible. So this is probably not going to work out too well for me, oh, especially considering I might get shot. This, uh, thankfully, this guy is only a Batanian wood runner, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about him. Oh, <laughs> murdered. I very much like two-handed weapons. I feel like the two-handed weapons in Bannerlord are really exciting to use and they have a, a nice amount of enjoyment and satisfaction level to them. Thankfully, I'm not taking too much damage from this enemy here because of my amazing armor. You've got a two-handed axe, all right. I'm coming for you! Oh, oh, no. Don't, don't go for that. Oh, no, oh, Iceni. Do not go for the overhead with an axe. That is never a good idea. You know how overheads used to be like a favorite of mine in Warband? In Bannerlord, it's completely different. I do not like the overhead attack because it's more realistic and they attack across the body, if you understand what I mean. Let me let me see if I can show you. Yeah, here we go. So look, they're, they're attacking across the body. So they're following through with the slice and it's going across the body. I'm not a big fan of that, mainly because I, I just can't make it. I just can't make it work. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I was, mm, yes, good. Very nice, very nice. Okay, well, I don't actually need to win the tournament, but uh, it was nice to gain a little bit of experience anyway. And these are my current stats, by the way, as well now. So you can see that increases your movement speed by 10%. What? Oh, they've done a great job on this. They've done a great job on this particular trait. This is crazy. 10% increased movement speed? Like no one's business. Maybe I can even go over to Vlandian territory, maybe do a little bit of raiding as well. And uh, well, saying that, I don't have a huge amount of very powerful units or anything like that, so it might not really work out for us. Ooh, now that's some nice armor. Let me actually just take a quick look. Do I have any more? Yes, I do have some more javelins. So I should be able to utilize all of the these things quite nicely. So let me just sell all of that. There we go. We'll leave them with about 220. Happy with this massive battle royale here. And they've given me a two handed axe. Not a big fan of the axe, I've got to say. I like the sword a lot better, mainly because you can more accurately hit a lot of the body with a two handed sword. But not so much with. Ah, there we go. Got him. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, yes. Good. That was just a looter? No wonder I was able to block him so easily. 
Oh, my, my blocks are really, really bad, you know. They are so... Uh, yeah, I, I'm just kind of trying to dodge more than I am actually trying to, to block here because... Um, Blocking is not a strong suit of mine. I might be able to block relatively well against some two-handed weapon users, but whenever someone has a really short reach weapon or is a very fast attacker, oh, like this, for example, yeah, I can't possibly beat that. Hopefully my Sturgeon Shock Troop will actually win. Oh, this is bad news bears. This is bad news bears right here. Okay, come on now. Come on, Sturgeon Shock Troop. Yeah, there we go. Yo, whew, that was actually a lot closer than I anticipated. I really thought to myself, okay, you know, I should be okay here, but apparently not. Corrine is an absolute monster, and I am going to be very, very afraid of dealing with her in the future. Okay, uh, no. Okay, get him. Get him. Yeah, there we go. Whew. Okay, that was a little bit too close for my liking. What about nice thrust? Okay, no, never mind. He blocked it. Nice. Whew. Okay. That is so close. I, it feels like the enemy is super fast. I'll obviously, bear in mind that my proficiency in two-handed is so incredibly low that obviously my swing speed is going to reflect that. But it is very tense to go up against someone that literally has probably 150 or so in that weapon proficiency, especially Corrine right here. Corrine definitely has that. No. No. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, to the head. A slash to the head. Did you see that? Look at that. 360 degree spin in the middle of that fight. And that actually resulted in <laughs> complete luck. <laughs> complete luck right there. Okay, now I'm a little bit worried about going up against the Sturgeon Shock Troop because they're pretty good. They're pretty good, you know? They're not that bad. They got some decent stats, but hopefully I'm going to... Yeah, there we go. Pretty easy. <laughs> Pretty easy as it turns out, yes. Oh yeah, by the way, um, I just want to mention uh, very quickly that the Sturgeon Overhaul mod that I installed... I don't know whether you noticed, but in the previous episode I actually showed you the stats of all those guys. And I'm actually just going to show you very quickly right now. Do they seem any good to you? Do they seem any better than the other units? No, they don't, because they have exactly the same stats, right? They have exactly the same stats. Same as these guys. They have exactly the same stats as what you're going to see as other uh, other cavalry. Same with the berserkers. You're going to see the, um, you know, uh, whatever they are, the other berserker-ish units from Batania. They're going to be exactly the same in terms of this, as well as the uh, skirmishers from, from these guys and the bowmen, as you can see, are pretty awful. They're not that good, right? And the Sturgeon Light Cavalry, same thing. So me installing that mod, it literally just means that the Sturgeons have more of an identity in terms of Nord and Kievan Rus uh, background story and uh, providing them with just that little bit more identity in that regard. And it does just make them just that little bit better. That's it. Just that little bit better. And it doesn't really make them overpowered or anything like that. I, I think it's um, kind of amusing to actually have a concept of overpowered in a single player experience anyway, because obviously I'm not ruining anyone's fun. It's literally just making it slightly more balanced because as we've seen in the past, in every single series that I've created, Sturgia every single time loses first. They are the first faction to get eliminated. And if that is not imbalanced, I don't even know what is, to be honest. So I'm just trying to make it so that they don't. In other words, me being on their side, me trying to support them as much as I possibly can, and me making their their units just that little bit better by giving them some different equipment. And that's basically what the overhaul mod does. I now have the ability to sell a lot of armor for smaller prices, which is really good. That means that I can literally deal in smaller amounts of stuff. Look at this. What, what, what is this? Plan prisoners rescue and ransom prisoners? What's this? I have no idea what this means. Plan prisoners rescue? There are two notable characters that can be rescued from this town. I could also ransom them. Oh, I, I don't even know what mod, what, what, what mod is doing this, to be honest. Is this a, a base game thing? Maybe it is. Wow, that is actually really cool. Okay, well, I'm just going to go into the smithy real quick here because I do have some Fugios, as you can see right here. And yeah, you are 100% correct. They are very, very good for smelting. There's a lot of fine steel. 
there's a lot of regular steel, a lot of iron and all that stuff. So that is really, really good. And we're going to, oh, I don't have all the required materials. Oh, I'm going to need some more charcoal there. All right, there we go. And uh, these these things, not so much. The Zephos doesn't really give anything. So yeah, well, that's fine. Not a big deal. All right, so let's take a look at, um, actually, I'm just going to make a couple of, oh, I can't actually make any more javelins because I have no more hardwood. Okay, well, that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to make a two-handed sword now because I might have the ability to make something relatively good, maybe. I, I, I would actually quite like that. So let's see. Oh, this actually looks pretty nice too. This has much more cutting damage. It has good swing speed. The weapon reach is really nice too. Pretty happy with this. Let's try and increase the size of it a little bit. And um, I don't even know what these really do, to be honest. It just increases the length. It gives you a bit of hand armor and stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to make this. Let's call it... Um, oh, I don't know. Ice ice Slasher. There we go. It's, it's not going to be that good, by the way. It's not going to be that good right now. Um, but it's going to be a two-handed sword that I can potentially use. So that's all I'm basically really want... That's, that's all I'm basically really, really wanting. It sells for 89000 as well. So if I get into a spot of bother with my money, then I can literally just sell that. All right, so we're going to try and do a little bit of a plan here. I uh, decided that I'd take a look at my inventory real fast just to see if I needed to offload anything else before we went in here. Currently believe the chance of success for this plan is fairly low. There is no distraction in place. You will be facing the full force of the guards. A direct approach will be taken, breaking into the dungeon by force. Once the deed is done, you'll fight your way out if you have to. Okay, so the... Oh, what? Start a fire outside the walls? Use officer disguises. Disguise fugitives as messengers. The plan... <laughs> Ah, uh, that's not going to work. Okay, what about scaling down the walls? No, that is not going to work. Uh, what about play the role of search party? Okay, let's try something a little bit different. Pay the guards to escort? No. Use soldier disguises? No. Pretend to be construction workers? Fairly low. Okay, what about hiring entertainers? Poison the water? All of this is just terrible. That doesn't. I, it doesn't seem to really make any difference, to be honest. It feels to me like the chance of success is so incredibly low, no matter what, that I don't really know what to go for. I, I guess we'll try executing the plan, and we'll see what happens. The plan has failed. The prison cells could not be reached. Cover was blown during the approach. Our involvement was not directly revealed. We can try again another time. Oh, okay, so there is no punishing factor to that whatsoever, which is actually quite nice. But what we are going to do is we're literally just going to ransom our people back. And uh, that's it. Uh, because I, I don't really want to go through all of that again. But we can try that later on. Maybe I need something else to make it a little bit better in terms of success rating maybe we're going to need roguery or something like that it might very well be the case that roguery is required but unfortunately at the moment roguery is just not very effective in many different aspects svedorn is actually here hello there mr svedorn i would like to join your army potentially and let's try to do a little bit of a siege me joining this army does that actually increase my engineering all right, so here we go. Yeah, you last saw me doing a bit of a siege, eh? And uh, helping out Mr. Svedorn's army. Well, yes, uh, that didn't really work out too well, as you can quite clearly see. We're now being attacked by a very large force of Vlandians. How the turns have tabled. Ah, uh, yes, they have indeed. Because, well, in the previous series, we were actually playing on Vlandia's side. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Anyway, I am in command of the archers, and I have told them to auto-delegate for the most part, because generally the AI works much better when you tell your units to skirmish. It looks like it's the it's the darkness bringer, doesn't it? It literally looks like it is going to murder everything in sight. It is a little bit slow. It is a little bit slow, mainly because I probably made it way too large, but it does have a lot of reach as a result, and I think that's going to be quite effective for us. So this is what's currently happening. We have 200, they have 300 on the battlefield, and we're going to see if we can achieve some kind of victory. Hilariously enough, we, we don't seem to really be moving at all. Ah, look at this. We have some Vlandian cavalry coming in. And now this is going to be a very true test of how good the Sturgeon units actually are, because it's been a long time since I have played 
Ow, did I just get headshot? Yes, I did. Yeah, anyway, it's been a long time since I have played with Sturgeon units. And the last time that I played with them, they were abysmal. They were pretty bad. And uh, the only time that I've actually seen Sturgeon units be good is when they have basically murdered me with one shot with a thrown weapon from horseback. That's pretty much the only time that I've seen that. What we're gonna do is we're hopefully gonna be able to get into a battle here, a, a at least a little bit of a skirmish with some of these units. Maybe I can, oh, nice hit, nice hit. It seems like the enemy is actually running into us with a lot of recruits at the moment, which I think is the primary reason why we're actually getting any kind of positive resolution here. As you can see, most of them are actually recruits, hilariously enough. I don't know why that is. Probably because they've placed all of their power in cavalry? I'm actually not sure about that. Oh, I, I seem to seem to consistently get myself murdered. Okay, so far so good. We are in a defensive position as well, and the enemy was charging, so of course that is also going to play a major factor. All right, so it seems like we can now just hold position once again. We're doing that thing that the defenders do, aren't we? Yes. We're doing that thing where whenever there's a, an enemy that outnumbers a particular army or whatever, then uh, basically what you're going to do is you're just going to stay in your reinforcement zone. Here we go. Yeah, nice. Oh, that was a nice slash if ever I saw one. I'm keeping my shield out right now, mainly for one reason and one reason alone, because I don't want to get headshot and killed immediately. So I like to try and play a little bit more defensively at the moment, even though I would love to use my two-handed. I think it might be a little bit too slow at the moment. I might need to go into a couple more tournaments and maybe just raise up my weapon proficiency a little more maybe just to make it a little bit more viable for us in an actual battle situation. And you can see here we're actually starting to lose a lot more units because the higher tier infantry of the of the enemy is actually coming in and doing a bit of damage. Okay, uh, I'm not entirely sure how I got shot from here, to be honest. I was actually just messing around at the back of the allied army, just swinging around my two-handed to kind of get a bit more used to the timing of the sword. And uh, I got shot from all the way over here. I was behind the hill, and I was behind a huge amount of my own forces. And can you believe that I got killed from all the way back here? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's that's gotta be uh, <laughs> that's gotta be a record for you know for the AI focusing down uh, your forces. That is actually hilarious. Anyway, as you can see, they have now taken up a very defensive position, and they have a huge line of caval uh, cavalry, huge line of crossbowmen. Oh, they actually have a huge line of cavalry as well, as you can see. What? This is a massive amount of cavalry. They could literally just charge this cavalry in straight away and they would probably achieve victory, but they're being a little bit tentative at the moment. Oh, we're actually starting to charge now. We're actually starting to charge. I actually sped up the game by a pretty significant amount. We were at, um, I, be I believe, about eight minutes. And now we are nine minutes 40 into the battle. And it is about time that the Sturgeons decide to charge in. The horn of war was sounded and they charged straight at the opponent. Now, I'm hopeful that the Vlandians will not have had a, enough time to prepare any kind of flanking maneuver with their cavalry, because otherwise we are probably going to have some issues. But playing defensively in that first half of the fight, that really made a huge difference to maintaining our numbers advantage, because obviously we didn't even have a numbers advantage to begin with, but we were able to thin out the enemy's numbers by such an amount that we were able to pull off a victory which is crazy because i wouldn't have expected that i literally would have expected us to lose right then and there but the combat strength as you could no doubt tell was in favor of the vlandians so there's also that <gasps> look we've got heroes they're dying they died in battle did you see that look at that ingaltha is dead and isvan is also dead isvan is actually from the sturgeons and ingaltha as we know is indeed from the Vlandians. Interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Okay, I will be taking as many prisoners as I can get my hands on because I can, of course, recruit some. 
And then we will be, of course, leveling up a couple more people too. And then we'll move on. Okay. Now, a, a, a number of nice pieces of loot as well. And gather your men. We have another job to do. Yes, we certainly do. I will be leaving your army now, and I will be making my way back to Sturgeon territory as fast as I possibly can, because I'm going to need to restore myself before we are capable of participating in any other fisticuffs. And it seems like the Northern Empire and Britannia have made peace, so the Northern Empire might very well declare war against us relatively soon. But, well... We'll see how it goes. That was actually a very exciting battle, even though I did get taken out with a very silly way, but never mind. Anyway, if you'd like to check out my new mod load order, there is um, there is a list in the description. And uh, if you want to see any other playlist or anything like that, then there's also links in the description there. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It does help me out. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.